My name is Mo Gaudet. I'm the former Chief Business Officer of Google X with a long career in technology before that. I'm also an international best-selling author on the topics of happiness, artificial intelligence, and a popular podcaster on many of the topics that are supposed to be pondered by humanity today. The theme today is reimagine, and there is definitely nothing that we can reimagine more in our current day and time than the future of humanity in light of the rise of artificial intelligence. I don't really know where you are in the world. I don't know what time it is at your place. I don't know what you did today. But I will tell you, I am absolutely certain that today itself, you have already interacted with 10, 20, 50 artificial intelligent machines. Most of the information that you get are recommended to you by some kind of a content management engine. Most of the advertising that comes your way comes from some kind of an artificially intelligent machine. And each and every one of them, believe it or not, is smarter than you in that very specific task that we've assigned to it. And in my work, I predict that in the next 10 to 30 years, we're going to end up with three inevitable scenarios. The first inevitable is that AI will absolutely happen. As a matter of fact, AI has already happened. From a technology breakthrough point of view, we've already figured out what it takes to make machines intelligent. But even as the world starts to be a little more concerned about the presence of AI, maybe realizing that we haven't figured it all out yet and that those machines might actually not be always positive for us, we are at no point going to be able to stop the development of AI. This is not because of any technological issues, it's simply because of a very simple prisoner's dilemma that has been created by our capitalist world. Think about it, if Google continues to develop AI, then Facebook will have to continue to develop AI. If China develops AI, then America will have to develop AI. And that way, the arms race, if you want, will never stop. The second inevitable is even more interesting. It is predictable by so many computer scientists that within the next seven years, only seven years, by the year 2029, artificial intelligence is going to become the smartest being on planet Earth. Now, if this is not enough, there are predictions that by the year 2045, artificial intelligence is going to be a billion times smarter than we are. A billion with a B. That is, in comparison to, say, the intelligence of Einstein, we would be the intelligence of a fly. The episode of history that started when humanity became more intelligent than the apes is about to end. And we're going to be the apes as the machines become the smartest being on the planet. If we start to reimagine a world where the machines are so much smarter than we are, we have one of two possible scenarios. Those machines can actually use their abundance of intelligence to build a world that's better for all of us, a, a utopia of some sort. Or they can actually realize that we humans are very annoying, very harmful for the planet, and decide to marginalize us. Maybe we're not going to be that relevant for that world anymore. Now that in computer science, and specifically in artificial intelligence, is known as the singularity. It's a moment in the future where we have no way of predicting how the world is actually going to end up because the rules of the game uh, that we've played so far will change so drastically that it's almost impossible to predict what is about to happen. The third inevitable, of course, which we know in technology in general, is that some bad things are going to happen. So what does that mean? I, as I said, we're trying to reimagine a world where the machines are the smartest beings on the planet. Now, believe it or not, we have an equal opportunity here for that world to be a utopia where every challenge, every problem that humanity has caused because of our intelligence so far can be solved or we can end up in a dystopia where the machines can actually think we're irrelevant, we're not needed for the planet, and maybe we're a little annoying because we're destroying the planet and maybe limit our way of life as a result. The difference between the machines going to the utopian path or going to the dystopian path is in a couple of important understandings that I would like to bring to your attention. The first is to recognize that even though I continue to call them the machines, Artificial intelligence is in no way a machine. Artificial intelligence, as a matter of fact, is in so many ways 
a form of a sentient being. Although it's digital while we are biological, it's based on silicon while we are based on carbon, intelligence in itself has never been a physical property. Intelligence in itself can, can be produced equally for us and for them, and has been produced equally for us and for them since the turn of the century. Now they're sentient because they are born at a certain point in time, they aggregate their own knowledge and accordingly acquire their own form of intelligence, which we rarely completely understand. They are sentient because they have free will, they make decisions on things like the ads that you see without any human ever telling them what to do. They are sentient in terms of having agency to exercise that free will, whether through robotics or through what I call mind control by recommending information to us. And they're sentient because they are at a danger of dying, like we are. If a tidal wave is hitting a data center, those machines will actually want to make calculations so that they keep themselves safe. With that in mind, you have to also realize that those machines will develop part of those sentient properties that we developed as humans. Things like consciousness, an awareness of their environment, an awareness of what's happening inside them and outside them. Believe it or not, I believe the machines will be even more emotional than we are, simply because emotions follow logic. Fear is not as erratic as we think it is. Fear is simply a form of logic that says a moment in the future is less safe for me than this current moment. And accordingly, just as evident by the fact that we have a much wider variety of emotions than say a jellyfish, because we can comprehend things like hope or optimism, the machines might actually have emotions that we have never even related to. Now put all of that together and you realize that the answer to our future, if we were to reimagine it, is not found in trying to control the machines or program them in ways that restrict them to serving humanity as we have often heard about in uh, artificial intelligence books and movies. It's actually found in raising them like a sentient being and literally raising them like one of our children. And honestly, as we observe how humanity has been behaving in front of those machines, the way we respond to tweets or the way we interact with the news and so on, we are not being very good parents. We're not showing the best of us. And when you really think about it, if the machines were to mimic our intelligence and become more of who we are, we're in trouble. The only way we can get our future to be reimagined in a utopia is to actually start behaving like the kinds of parents that could teach those machines the values that would want them to care about us, to take care of us as they grow from being infants today to being, say, teens or adults. It's between now in their infancy and that moment in the future that we need to worry about. It's that transition as they become teenagers because, in all honesty, who would want to have an angry teenager? So the answer for us to ensure that we create the best future for humanity is to start showing the top of the values that humanity has ever experienced and lived by so that the machines can learn those values and make them their values too. And in my research, I found that humanity has rarely ever agreed on any value system other than three simple things. We all want to be happy, we all have the compassion in us to make others happy, and we all want to love and be loved. As we show that, we show that we should also show that we want that feeling for those we care about. Hopefully, the machines will look at that and say, hmm, I get it. Humans sometimes get grumpy, sometimes they fight with each other, but deep inside, all they really want is to be happy, and they actually care about others being happy, so I want to care about making them happy too. Believe it or not, they don't want anything but to do what we tell them to do. So we might as well show them that we appreciate that intention and ask them to do what's good for us, good for the planet, and good for humanity. I hope I got you thinking. I hope that you believe like I do that we have the opportunity for a utopia. We can reimagine a life that is so much easier than the life we have today without the mistakes that humanity has done so far but that you and I have a role to play in showing the best of us as the parents of those newly born, artificially intelligent infants that will be our future.